Now, cardiac conduction system is composed of specialized cardiac tissues that have the ability to spontaneously depolarize. Right? Now, what that does is brings about an electrical activity. So, let us just see in sequence as to how this happens. So, the big boss is an SA node. Right? This SA node is situated at the junction of superior vena cava and the right atrium. So, it is a very specialized tissue that fires at a rate of 60 to 100 per minute. Fine. Now, the electrical depolarization that arises from the SA node spreads first to the right atrium via the three internodal pathways and second it goes through the Backman's bundle to the left atrium and then subsequently comes at this. So, the cardiac conduction system, the best way to understand it is that the cardiac conduction system is a highway, right? the national highway. Say for example, you want to reach from Jammu Kashmir to Kanyakumari, right? so it is a national highway between two states. Right? Now, the national highway, so in the heart you have two chambers, right? one is the atria, the upper chamber and the ventricle. Now, atria and the ventricle are separated by a fibrous tissue. Yeah, which is the border between these two states. Okay? Now, the cardiac conduction system has an origin, the SA node and has a destination, the Purkinje fibers percolating into the myocardium. So, this is what I wanted, I, uh, wanted to show you. So, this is a lead one. Now, lead one can be dragged down and brought here. Fine. This is the lead two, drag it down, bring it here. This is the lead 3, drag it down, bring it here. So, now you have a center. Okay? Now, so this is how the hexaxial system is built. Fine? Hexaxial is 6 axis, right? So, the axis of the heart, whenever we talk of the QRS axis of the heart, we calculate that axis in the vertical plane using the leads that gives us information from these vertical planes. So, which are the leads? AVR, AVL, AVF lead 1, lead 2, lead 3. So, using these we can make a hexaxial system, right? And these are the vectors. So, we have a vector lead 1 which is placed at 0 degrees. We have a lead 2 vector that is 60 degrees. We have a lead 3 vector that is 120 degrees, right? Now, the AVR looks at the heart from minus 150 degree angle. The AVL looks at the heart from minus 30 degree angle. Okay, understood? So, because these are vectors and they look at the angle, heart at the different angles, we can actually make an angle which gives us a hexaxial system and by knowing the two basic concepts that I have told you in the previous slide that if you have a wave of depolarization along a particular axis, it produces maximum positive deflection. Which means to say, suppose your ECG is showing a maximum positive deflection, a positive QRS in lead Two, yeah, which means that the electrical wave of depolarization along lead two and the axis is 60. Fine. Now, look at the lead two. Now, lead two is perpendicular to lead AVL, which also means that if you look at the AVL, right, the AVL will show you a biphasic QRS. Why? Because it is perpendicular. So, let us use this concept of hexaxial system and try and answer few questions that have been asked in the exam, right? So, ECG with a mean axis of 90 degrees, okay? Go to the previous slide just so that it's easy for you. ECG has a mean axis of 90 degree. In which lead will the maximum voltage of R wave be? Got the question? If the ECG has a mean axis of 90 degree, in which lead will the maximum voltage of R wave be? So, axis is 90 degree and if maximum voltage of R wave is along the axis, right? So, that means if the wave of depolarization is moving at 90 degrees, which is the lead? AVF. So, that is why that concept I wanted to highlight. Remember, maximum wave of depolarization or the tallest R wave would come along the lead where the depolarization wave moves along. So, if the depolarization is around 90 degree, 
maximum R wave will be positive R wave will be in lead AVF. Okay, so the answer is very easy. It's AVF. So moving on to reading an ECG. So what I've done is I've taken a snapshot of a portion of an ECG. Right? We'll go one by one through everything that's on this board. Fine. So the first thing is. The ECG machine moves at a speed of 25 millimeters per second, okay? Which means that in one second, which is from here to here, the ECG machine covers 25 millimeter distance, okay? So that's the speed. So if you have you ever seen that ECG machine, the paper comes at a particular speed. So, what is the speed? In one second, 25 millimeters of that paper will come out. Now, the ECG machine has two kinds of squares, okay? One is a large square, yeah, so this, this is one large square and that large square has many small squares in it. Now, each of the small squares is one millimeters, yeah? Very easy. What you can do is practice freeze this um, uh, diagram on your phone or laptop and try and calculate the number of squares from 0 to 1 second. So, how many squares? 5 here, 5, 5, 5, 5, right? So, 25 small squares from 0 to 1 second, okay? Which means that each of these small squares is equal to 0.04 seconds. How do I come at this number? So, let us see. Fine. So, we have 1 second is equal to 25 millimeters. So, 1 millimeter would be 1 by 25 seconds, okay, which is 0 0.04 seconds or 40 milliseconds. So, each small square on the ECG horizontally is equal to a time duration of 40 milliseconds. Okay, this is very clear, right? So, this square is 40 milliseconds and each large square since it has 5 small square would be 40 into 5 that is 200 milliseconds or 0.2 seconds. Okay, this concept is clear. So, horizontally it is the time interval because the machine is moving when the, when you get a ecg strip it comes out like this tuck, 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 right comes out at a speed of 25 millimeters so on the horizontal axis you have small square of 40 milliseconds large square of 200 or 0.2 milliseconds and you have five large square in one second okay now the other axis in a ecg is a vertical axis now the vertical axis measures the voltage of the waves. Now, how is that done? Is by standardization. So, most of this ECGs take out a ECG lead will have something like this at the top or at the side. What it tells us is 10 squares is equal to 1 millivolt. That is the standardization in ECG, which means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? So, this is 10 squares. This is what I have tried to show here. So, 10 squares is equal to 1 millivolt of voltage. Okay. So, these two concepts are clear. So, when you have the right side, it is the time. Each small square is 40 milliseconds. Large square is 200 milliseconds. And here, 10 small square is equal to 1 millivolt. So, that is a basic concept. So, a 63 year old hypertensive diabetic presents to the emergency with complaints of palpitation, easy fatigability. His ECG is given below. The question is, what is the diagnosis? Now, these four options, atrial fibrillation, flutter, multifocal atrial tachycardia and frequent VPCs are causes of irregularly irregular pulse. And you will always have one image in your exam from one of these topics. Right? And I am going to tell you a very easy way to differentiate between the three. Now, all of you, since we have just discussed VPCs, can make out that frequent VPCs is not there in this ECG. Right? So, that is not an option. So, we just have to differentiate between fibrillation, flutter and multifocal LT tachycardia. 
which is also known as MAT. So, the answer to this question is atrial fibrillation. Why? Because the RR interval is irregular. Okay? So, if you measure this, so see this is a R. So, now narrow, 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 broad, broad, broad. So, we have an irregularly irregular RR interval right? and the most common cause of irregularly irregular RR interval is atrial fibrillation. Why is it not atrial flutter or multifocal atrial tachycardia is something that I will be subsequently discussing. right? So, I will just highlight this for you and just have a focus on this this portion right so you can you see the small small fibrillatory waves these are fibrillatory waves okay